This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by lynda.com. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Rumor Roundup. I'm your host, John Ranger. It's the show where I take every tech rumor from the week and I look at them all and I smash them and I pick the three to five that I think are the most interesting. Up this week, it's top of my mind because my iMac's on the fritz. A new iMac may be coming. G Watch specs, whatever the LG is going to pack into the little wrist computer, might be getting legit. If you look at your brand new HTC One M8 and you're like, my phone's the newest, I love you, phone. Looks like it might not be the newest for long because the M9 Prime is coming and freaking bendy phones and tablets might be coming sooner than you think. This is Rumor Roundup. Let's start just rounding them up. Group hug. There was a quick report before Apple's WWDC last week suggesting Apple was going to release a new and more affordable iMac computer during the show. Now, obviously, it was all about software, so that didn't happen. But that rumor sticks around for a while. And much like herpes, it's hard to get rid of and doesn't seem to die. Mac Generation said recently that Apple plans to upgrade its iMacs next week, which is pretty awesome. The video comes out on Friday, so if you're watching this sometime on Monday or so this week, the new computers won't launch with iOS 10 Yosemite. Of course, the OS is still super beta. We've been trying it, it's very beta. And set to launch sometime this fall. However, fret not, they suggest that Apple is gonna break from its ordinary tradition of announcing the refresh earlier in the week on Tuesday and will instead release the device during the second half of the upcoming week. Computers are set to ship with slightly newer and slightly faster Haswell processors. Speculation though, they might pack Thunderbolt 2 ports as well. Not giant upgrades, really. Uh, Apple will probably uh, quietly release these, though. We do hope predictions of a cheaper iMac might come to fruition. Apple also dropped the price of its entry-level MacBook Air to $899, so it seems possible the same kind of move uh, might be reflected in the new iMac family, which would always be nice. Less money is always better. Although persistent rumors of a retina display iMac coming very soon are also very enticing. If you're like me, you need to get a new iMac because something's up with my Wi-Fi and it will not connect. I'm gonna wait to see if a Retina one uh, comes out. If you can wait, you know, probably do it. Uh, you know, a little spec bump stuff can make that big difference. But yeah, it's your money. You do what you want with it. I'm not here to tell you. You make the decisions. With Google I.O. coming very quickly, we're expecting a lot more information to drop about Android Wear and of course about devices like the super hot LG G Watch and the one I can't wait for, the freaking Moto 360. But we probably don't have to wait all that long because the leaking faucet has been turned on and we might know the full spec sheet of LG's upcoming wearable along with new pictures of the backside of the device. And you always got to trust the backside. It's got a big one and we know that they don't lie. So let's go ahead and dive in on what the specs might be. So first the device is going to adhere to the square form factor LG has repeatedly teased in the past, giving it uh, additional kind of just regular smartwatch feel. Uh, on the inside though, it's what a lot of folks are going to be paying attention to, including this folk. Uh, according to the document, the G-Watch will sport a 400 mAh battery with standby time of 36 hours. Uh, the LCD screen will be 1.65 inches or 280 by 280, while the device itself will reportedly be 37.9 by 46.5 by 9.95 millimeters. That was a lot of millimeters to remember. Uh, diving further though, the G-Watch will reportedly feature 4 gigabytes of onboard storage, estimated 2 hour charging time, Bluetooth 4.0, and a 5 pin micro USB contact on the back. I can let that slip out of my mind now. Uh, the spec sheet also further confirms some of the device's functionality uh, through Android Wear, like the ability to take memos, send SMS, dictate email, all through voice. Uh, Google actually shared a kind of a cool glimpse of what it was like for designers now using these different wearable form factors. And it seems like we're gonna get the full unveil though coming soon at IO at the end of the month and I will be there and I'm excited. So coming very, very soon. But that Moto 360, I just, I can't like get another smartwatch. I feel like I'm cheating on that Moto 360. I'm wearing a Pebble and I feel dirty. I feel like my Moto 360 is gonna know what I did when I put my Pebble on in a dirty motel room. Moto 360, don't worry, baby. You know I love you. So you're a brand new HTC One M8. You're just like, oh, look, friends. I got a new phone. I waited two years and my phone's the freaking newest. So boom, not gonna be the case very long. We've been hearing rumors that we're gonna M8 Prime was gonna be coming, but it appears that's been put on indefinite hiatus, according to a recent report. But don't worry, evidently, HTC is hard at work on a successor uh, to the existing M8 and plans to launch its next flagship during Q1 2015, which is still kind of far away. 
So according to the pretty reliable Evlex, HTC will launch its M9 and M9 Prime devices as the next full refreshes to the M1 family. Although inexplicably, the Prime version is expected to launch first. So that should be the flagship phone, then the regular M8, sort of not the flagship phone. I don't know how it's gonna work. Uh, with smartphones advancing at such a, just a crazy clip, it appears handset makers might sort of adopt a new approach in releasing high-end devices. We take these rumors to be true, and Evlex is really good track record. HTC might start the trend by unleashing a super phone type device with the highest end possible specs possible for just the hardcore fans, and then release sort of a normal flagship for the average consumer that doesn't need like 97 cores. I know, it's not possible, John. You can't have 97 cores. I know, it's just an exaggeration. Please don't yell at me. Uh, right now, companies like to release a flagship and then follow that up with a mid-range device with watered-down specs. This newest approach, though, could essentially replace the flagship with a prime iteration and the mid-range with a typical flagship. So that was a lot of stuff. Are you just still with me? It's a crazy model, but more phones, more specs, more better, and more quicker releases. So, I don't know. You just... You can always get a new phone in a few months. It seems like, should I wait? Should I not wait? Something new is always coming. It's hard to pick the best phone. I think we have to get used to knowing that you're not gonna have the newest phone for like, you know, a week. You go back a couple years, you know, you could get a new Samsung phone like honestly every other week. And it kind of seems like they spaced out a little bit now. It's every two weeks. And maybe HTC is kind of going down that same road. I don't know, but looking like it's gonna be kind of soon. I was really looking forward to the M8 Prime with what it's shaping into. We saw pictures of it and all that kind of stuff. We don't know what the reasons are, but I'm kind of happy M9's coming. New phones mean new things to play with, and I love to play with toys. I have bad tech ADD. I'm like, more shiny. This screen has that much resolution. So I don't know, I'm excited. Are you excited? Are you annoyed at HTC? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave in the comments. Located. You know where it's located. Before we get to the next rumor, I want to take a minute to thank our friends and good peeps at lynda.com. If you looked at the internet, looked at your phone, and been like, I wish I could speak that language, lynda.com can help you do it. You can learn to create and build Android apps in Java from the foundations of object-oriented Java programming to using the Android API to create engaging mobile apps. Learn to develop apps for today's popular desktop and mobile platforms with web apps, with .NET, PHP, MySQL, and improve your language skills with JavaScript, Ruby, C, C++, R, and so much more. I have a ton of courses from foundations of programming, Android app development with Java Essential Training, Android SDK, running with Java applications, building and monetizing game apps for Android, and just everything in between. Membership starts at just 25 bucks per month, provides unlimited 24 seven access. Give them a shot for free for seven days by visiting lynda.com slash technobuffalo. That's L-Y-N-D-A.com slash technobuffalo. Back to the rumors. So last but definitely not least, freaking bendy phones could be coming. Samsung is hard at work developing flexible AMOLED displays. We've already seen this tech though used in the Galaxy Round and the Gear Fit. But according to a new report, Samsung could take a gigantic leap forward next year with a, get this, folding tablet smartphone hybrid. Just take a second with that fit, let that just sink in. Folding tablet smartphone hybrid. So this fresh rumor comes from the Korean web portal Daum, D-A-U-M, which might just be DAM, and an anonymous industry insider, which is always the best kind. Uh, details surrounding Samsung's revolutionary product though are still super scarce, though it sounds like the device is gonna transform from an eight or nine inch tablet to a four or five inch smartphone by literally folding in on itself, which is crazy. Uh, Daum also claims um, that it's gonna line up with an earlier patent for a trifold device that Samsung had a little while ago. The idea of combining a tablet and a smartphone to one device isn't super new. Look at the Asus and its pad phone line. But if Samsung can pull this off, it might take the market by freaking storm. A lightweight tablet transforms into a phone is crazy. And imagine how freaking cool that's gonna look. Also, imagine if, if it would do it itself. Push a button, it like transforms. Um, it'd be kind of awesome. Obviously, the caveat of concerns, how thick is it gonna be? What are the hinges gonna look like? That kind of stuff are all sort of to be determined. But just the idea that we're living in the freaking future. We got Google showing cards to drive themselves. We got tablets folding, uh, just crazy stuff. I wouldn't get too excited that this is gonna come, you know, next year. This is probably two, three years down the road if it ever does happen. Uh, but awesome that they're trying it. We heard rumors at CES last year that Samsung was showing off early versions of this technology, but no one actually got to see it, or at least, you know, live to see the day after they saw it. Uh, but it could be coming very, very soon, you know, in a few years. 
Thank you guys for watching an episode of Rumor Roundup. I think you're putting up with my really bad jokes. Half of my bad jokes probably got cut out of this video anyway. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, we're back every week with brand new rumors. Please uh, check us out at technobuffalo.com and leave comments down below and just say hi or tell me your bad joke. I'd love to hear it. Until then, I am John Rettinger. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. We'll be the first ones to know whenever we upload new content. We've got new stuff coming every single day. We want to make sure you see what's new in the world of consumer electronics.